Hello and welcome to part 2 of programming using Pitex. In this video we're going to cover inputs, if commands, symbols and if you have time, variables. First thing I'm going to do is type in main as our program label and I'm going to introduce you to something new which is inputs. Now just as if you wanted an LED connected to pin 3 for example to come on and you'd write pi 3 for inputs, you'd use input and then whichever number it is. So that's 0 or 1 or 2, etc. Now these inputs can only have two values, which are 1 and 0. 0 being on, or sorry, 0 being off and 1 being on. So for example, input 0, which is one word in pickaxe, equals 1 means it's on. However, inputs, you don't deliver current to, you detect whether current is coming in to the chip, which is, you know, if it's coming into you. So I'm going to introduce you to a new command called if commands. So for example, if we write if input what 0 equals 1, then, say for example, wait 1, what we're saying is, if this input is on, then the program should, and then whichever your command is, in this case, wait 1. Uh, with some programs, such as this, you've got to end all if statements with an end if statement. And that, that, that's a bit like uh, using quotation marks. Uh, if you start with one, you've got to end with another. So, if we have go to main on this, and we click on simulate, it'll just keep going round until if we click on the input 0 on the simulation it will detect that input 0 is on and then it will wait 1 so if you just sort of pause in the program there to make it uh, a bit easy to see you might put instead of then wait 1 you might put then hi 2 so if input 0 is 1, in fact let's change the input this time input 1 is on, then the program should hi2. So nothing's happening now, but if we turn input 1 on, then pin 2 comes on. However, if we want to, to turn it off as soon as the input's gone, we've got to add a new command for that, because at the moment it's just ignoring it. So we can have the second command, if input 1 equals 0, so if input 1 is off, then low 2, and finish it off with an end if. And now it should go in a loop, and if this is on, or if the right input is on, then it should light up, if it turns off, then the light turns off. Now you can add any command uh, within the, uh, after the then, so for, for example you could say go to main or go to any other part of the program you could pause 500 uh, wait 10 so anything you like can be the result of your if command so let's write a sample command let's say you've got a burglar alarm and if an input is on for example input 0 then current is delivered to a pin and the burglar alarm goes off so let's say if input 0, which is the the trigger switch, whatever it might be, like a pressure pad, if input 0 is 1, so if that input is activated, then hi 2, let's say pin 2 is connected to some sort of alarm. However, so, um, and then we'll have it as a loop, so go back to main if it's not on. And we've got to finish it off with an end if. So if input 0 is on, pin 2 will turn on, in which case is the alarm, and it will keep looping round. Let's say for example you've got a separate switch which turns the whole alarm system off. So then you can say if input 2 or input 1 is on, then low 2, end it. So if one switch is on, so if input 0 switches on, in this case, the alarm will start ringing, 
and if the off switch is pressed, which in this case is input 1, then the alarm will turn off. If you've got both on at once, it will turn on and off, on and off, as fast as the program can cope, which in terms of the actual circuit could be thousands of times a second. next thing I'm going to show you is something called symbols. So at the top of your um, program, but even before you write main, you can put symbol, let's say symbol 4 or symbol alarm equals 4. Now hopefully this should set pin 4 to alarm. So we can call, instead of writing pin 4 each time, so as not to get confused between pins, we can just write alarm. And that's just to make things simpler when writing programs. So hopefully, if we put high alarm here, and loop it round, there we go, pin 4 is turned on. Because what the symbol command does, is it renames which uh, the second part of the equals, or whatever after the equals, to whatever's before the equals. So let's do something else. Let's try symbol input 0 or in fact symbol pressure pad equals input 0 and then we'll write the same program as before so if pressure pad equals 1 so if the pressure pad is on then I and then we'll write alarm siren alarm siren isn't a recognized command yet so if we put symbol alarm siren is let's say pin 3, so symbol alarm siren equals 3, then instead of writing input 0 and pin 3, put an end if there, uh, you can just write pressure pad and alarm siren, and that's purely for your own convenience if, you know, in case you don't want to get mixed up between uh, different variable, uh, different um, pins on the pickaxe. So nothing's happened yet. But if we turn on input 0, which is pressure pad, then the alarm siren, which is pin 3, will go on. I suggest you uh, practice around with if commands, with inputs, with outputs. Uh, try and incorporate some of the stuff we used in the last video. So go to and then different programs like main2 and then have main2 below it just to split your program up and also incorporate a few pause and wait commands okay that's it for this video next video will be covering variables and analog sensors and possibly going over a few past papers see you next time